Hey guys, Tor from TC at TC here today, and finally, finally, after all this time, I have Dan and Nick here. That pedal show. Hello. And Hello. We known each other for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I actually visited you guys not too long ago. We did a great show. It was so much it. fun. You should. It. it was fun. It was nerdy for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. But in a good way. And even back then, we talked about doing tone prints, and yeah. we agreed that. It would be cooler if we actually. We stamped our feet up and down and said, "Look, we want to." Steve Morse has got one. What about us? <laughs> what does Steve has that we? Yeah. No, actually, we were very surprised when Tor said, "Why don't you do a couple of tone prints?" And we're like, "Really?" So yes. No, really. it's so cool, and you know, <clears throat> managed to get you guys over here is brilliant. So you know, we've have had a bit of time yesterday, and we'll do some tone prints today. And we also been talking about some product ideas, which is also a lot of fun. But um, yeah, so you guys brought some old goodies. Yes, yes. And the first of these things here is the the massive. Yeah. So piece this of is this is my uh, Boss Chorus Ensemble. Uh, it is one of the very first pedals I ever owned. I heard this, and uh, this is when I was going through my rack phase. And then someone uh, I heard this one. Mm. And uh, not a few minutes after that, heard this one, and my life was forever changed. Um, this particular uh, pedal has a couple of quirks in it that do sound amazing, and I want to see if we can yeah. match. So that's the idea, is we want to see if we can get sort of similar to this amazing piece Behemoth. of old gear. Yeah, yeah m minus uh, two kilograms, <laughs> 600 pounds. A load of pedal board real estate. Yeah. Can yeah. we swap those things for a free download? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try to see how it goes. You sold me so far. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's pretty compelling when you put yeah. it like that, isn't it? So I guess that's the task. Yeah. Let's do it. You've got two sides to this. You've got um, there's the chorus and the vibrato. So basically, for anyone that doesn't know, this is the same circuit that uh, is in the Roland JC120. Synthesizer. Amplifiers. Right. Amplifiers, Amplifier. sorry, that's what, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's a stereo, well, they called it a stereo chorus, but in fact, it wasn't a stereo chorus. What it did was um, it would separate the modulation. So the modulation would go through one speaker and yeah. the direct would go through the other. So yeah. in the in the jazz chorus, you get this amazing, yeah, like a 3D thing. Yeah. In the chorus if, ensemble, if you're, if you're idiots like us, when you do the demo, you only mic one of the speakers in the air. <laughs> I hear nothing. <laughs> well, we, yeah, we just... were, no, we were doing the demo in the room. We're going, oh, this is amazing! It's massive. But the only the direct speaker was mic'd, so everyone's listening to it, oh, hearing yes. a very slight amount of yeah. chorus, and we go, oh uh, yeah. I had to do some, I had to do some magic with the room mics. Oh yeah. Uh, did it work, or did you have you... just about? Oh, okay. Yeah, I think we got away with it. Yeah. So what this does is. The stereo output, um, if you go through the mono output, you get the mix of the, the direct and the modulated signal. So it mixes inside the pedal. It mixes inside the yeah. pedal. But if I separate that and I, and I now come out of the stereo output, you only get the modulated sound. Oh my god, it's wobbly. It's wow. Yeah. There's nothing smooth about oh, it. Oh, can I? Wow. Right. That's that's interesting. Isn't it interesting? And but if I get then go go back to the mix sound. When you hear it now, you can hear that that's the sound of it. Exactly. You, if, of the vibrato part, but you know it's if, that if surprises you, me. If somebody had asked you, okay, draw the. Draw yeah. the modulation curve. Yeah. You, you would probably draw a really smooth, smooth. curve. Yeah. You? Yeah. And the interesting thing about this is that when you when you do pitch modulation, mm. it's the pitch basically only changes when the gradient of the curve changes. Yes. So if you imagined you had a square wave mm -hmm. or even a triangle, mm -hmm. and you basically you know you applied pitch modulation so so that waveform would basically you know you change the delay time the, the delay time slightly yeah yep. you would only get a change in pitch when it when it was at the uh, whenever on the triangle it was at the peak or at the low end 
right. nothing would happen. As soon as long as the curve is in the same position, mm -hmm. nothing changes. Which is why when you have a, a sine wave, the curve changes all the time, ever so slightly. Mm -hmm. But a triangle or a square wave will basically give you the same thing if you matched it so that the amount of pitch change would be half a half step. Mm -hmm. It would sound like you're alternating between two frets. No way. Yeah. And it actually sounds like it sounds to me like there's there are at least certain parts of this where it basically goes, yeah. it basically just changes pitch like you know, playing on a piano yeah. or. A... Can you? It's not a gradual thing. Not, not at all. Yeah. Not, nothing smooth about that yeah. at all. But when you hear that... Like me. When, when, <laughs> you, when you hear that mixed in... Yeah, it gives it that cool, quirky kind of sound. It's amazing. Yeah. Um, so that's that part. Now, what would happen normally in a C, uh, um, C1 chorus ensemble when you switch between the chorus and the vibrato here... Yeah. It would just turn off the direct sound. Yeah, so it'd so be the same as going out of the stereo output. Exactly. But in this pedal, when I do that, it just stops the oscillator, right? And so now, uh, the, the um, even though the vibrato is switched on, it's not oscillating anymore. And I get this. <laughs> can, you, can you explain to me why it sounds phasey to me? Why so, do I think it sounds phasey? So what's happening there is instead of modulating the delay time, right? It's, I would say it sounds flangy as opposed to phasey. Mm. But anyway, the vibrato is modulating a very short delay time, right? But what's happening here is, is there's no modulation. So all I'm doing is I'm changing very, very, uh, th that that uh, that very short delay time, but as I do that, there's a there's a phase relationship that happens between those two. The dry and the wet. The, the, the dry and the wet. So because they're the delay, so close. The delay time's there, but it's not being modulated. Exactly. Yeah. So, so you're still hearing two signals. Still hearing two it's two almost signals. like a doubler. It's yeah. almost exactly, but they're so close together, and then you get this phase relationship that happens between. It's like a notch filter yeah. that happens between those two signals. So just for the record, I was hearing a phase difference. <laughs> 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 yeah, so what basically is happening is you on, on the knob there, <laughs> you're controlling the you're controlling the amount of delay there's there between the dry signal and, and the wet signal. And the wet signal. Yeah. And it stays in one position. Typically you'd go from say, you know, ten milliseconds yep. up to twenty or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then it's stuck in one position and you basically control whether it's ten milliseconds all the time or yep. fifteen exactly. or whatever. Yeah. Exactly. So when we when we come to create tone print here, um, you're saying we can't stop the LFO completely, nope. but we can make it really slow. We can make it super slow, so it might give us sort of the same sound. But again, you know, we might as well get into the preamp now that we're talking about stuff we can't do. <laughs> it's, always a good, it's always a good start to doing a tone print. Yeah, here's a, this amazing pedal and here's all this stuff that we can do on our well, little green thing. We've been having a, a conversation this morning about you know the importance of, of preamps in certain pedals, and this is certainly one. Um, we did this. Uh, this uh, I've demoed this before about how certain guys would use this as an overdrive pedal. Yeah. All right. So um, if I go back to the the chorus sound, I'll turn the turn the chorus off, but the preamp here is still engaged. Yeah. For anyone that doesn't know. This is Boss's first pedal, but it wasn't designed for guitars, it was designed for keyboards, mm -hmm. right? And um, this, the level control is basically, it's, a, it's an input gain yeah. attenuator, and it happens right at the input, and that was a 50k pot, right? So normally the output of a keyboard has much lower output impedance and would easily drive that, but a guitar yeah. Um, has a much higher output impedance. And if you plug the guitar directly into this originally, it would be very dull. Mm. If you put a pedal before it and you drive, drive it with a buffer, then yeah. it'd be fine. However, um, so what you can do is change that pot from a 50K to a 500K. Yeah, right? which they did a standard after a while, didn't they? When they realized guitar players were using it? Y yeah. Um, 
I think they, because funnily enough, this wasn't around for that long before they released the, the yeah. small C2 right. version. Um, but yeah, they, they they did come out, I think, eventually um, with a, a higher um, resistance um, pot. But if you do the mod to the original one, which I've done, so I've put a 500k input pot, um, you can then, on this low setting, you get a, this really lovely... Um, all the top ends there. Yeah. But now if I switch that to the high setting and then turn it up a bit, you get this. Yeah. And that's a chorus pedal. I mean, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what happens with this, even, even on the low setting, it, when it's at unity, if I put the chorus on, and it's lovely and clean. It's amazing. But when I dig in, and it's not the amp doing that. It's not the amp doing that. Yeah. The drive is coming from yeah. the CE1. Yeah. So, um, so show us what you got. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and that's always the toss up because, you know, the thing is, that sounds. Incredible. That sounds mm. really, really cool. You hear that sound yeah. and you instantly know yeah. what, what it is, right? The downside, of course, is that if you have that pedal in your chain, that sound is always there. Absolutely. It's there yeah. regardless of whether you turn the pedal on or off. We designed Corona Chorus to be way more pristine of course. sounding. Mm -hmm. um, so first of all, it's two bypass. So mm -hmm. when you go through it and the pedal is off, there's nothing, yep. no components in yep. the signal chain. So you won't get all that lovely stuff. The other part of it is that even with the pedal is on, it has, first of all, there's analog drive through, which means that the dry part of the signal isn't converted to digital, even though it's a digital pedal. Mm -hmm. right. But the other part is that we deliberately designed this little analog circuit to be as transparent as possible. Yeah. So I just, let me just, so even though it's a modulation pedal, right? Mm -hmm. if, it were, if, if we were doing like a vibrato pedal, then that whole signal would need to be digital because that's modulating. But because this is like mixing the dry signal and the modulated signal, yeah. you're keeping that dry signal analog yeah. and the modulated signal, which is being digitized and modulated, yeah. is being mixed on top of the analog yeah, signal. On the, on the analog side of things. That, people, is the only way to do it. Absolutely. That analog yeah. dry through, I mean, we talk about this all the time. It's so important. I yeah. mean, even just mentally. Yeah. You know, uh, just. From well, so I mean, mentally, you know, f just the idea that you know your your nice dry guitar signal is, you know, suddenly zeros and ones. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's not always a nice thought for yeah. some weird yeah. reason. Yeah. yeah. Um, I still prefer it yeah. practically to mentally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah, yeah. you can just hear it. Yeah. You can hear it instantly. The other part is that even though it's tiny, there is a slight. Latency yeah, when you yeah. convert. Yeah. It took me it took me years to work that out. I'd, I'd be putting various multi box pedals on there to do the kind of you know you don't use a flander in every song, you don't use a phaser yeah. in every song, so you need a box that's going to do all those jobs yeah. throughout a set. And just never being. Yeah. And it took me years to work it out mm. until doing that pedal show. <laughs> then you learned everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then Dan just downloaded his brain. <laughs> um, <laughs> If we if we start with the modulation, then can we see yeah. if, if I if yeah. I get if rid of the dry to... signal here, and we'll see if we match that quirky yeah. modulation. Yeah. All right, let's do that. Let's try that. Would you do me a favor? Just how much pitch modulation is that? It's almost a semitone, isn't it? It's like. Oh, it starts it's down tuned. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on hang almost on. goes down then. Hang on, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Everyone's feeling yeah. slightly yeah. so. <laughs> oh. I think it was that last prawn, darling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's try this out then. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kill the dry signal out of this. So this is a sine wave, so now we can try to change it to the... Where are, can we have it just a second? There we go. It's 
this better? Try now. Oh, oh god. Oh, we've gone into a tri chorus. Yeah, but I will just kill some of these. I just want to make sure that we. Yeah. Is this better? I'm gonna exaggerate the death. Hey, we're getting there, <laughs> we're getting there! Okay. How are we on the depth? A little bit deeper. Time bit deeper. That's what she said. <laughs> Somebody had to do it. <laughs> okay, that's good. Now, just slow down a little tiny bit. Okay. A little faster, maybe? That's, that's fine. Can we make it a bit brighter? It's ever so slightly more accentuated, isn't it? I yeah. think we've got it now. It's slightly more extreme. Okay, quick A, B. It's actually more accentuated. No way, it? it's yeah. more. Wow. Yeah. Because we've got that through that thing, no, surely it can't yeah, be yeah. that drastic. Actually, you know, it is. So that's deeper. Is it? There's ever so slightly more wow. mo modulation as well, yeah. pitch wise. Mm. There you go. That's it. Yeah. Is that too much? Or? No, I think no, that's, that's, about, that's, that's, yeah. about, that's about bang on. Maybe you could try a different note. <laughs> <laughs> it only works on that note. <laughs> oh, it's gone. <laughs> okay, could, is there any more top, like I top end to be had more, on? There? I can't add more top end to be honest. Basically, it's it it's all downhill from here. Okay, it's it, everything is flat out as much. Okay. So and the thing again is that it doesn't have an, it's not an active. Uh, tone control yeah. okay. in there. Yeah. It's only a cut. So right. Okay. So, so you've, it's it's one open. If, if, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I think this is th these are the things that we shape when we put the overdrive pedal in front. Okay. Perfect. Mm. All right. Yeah. One thing we should actually consider before we dive into the whole drive section of this is that the shorter the delay time, so the shorter the minimum distance between the dry and the wet signal, mm -hmm. the more high end shimmery mm -hmm. the chorus is going to be. And the longer you stretch them apart, the the darker and more I don't know vintage sounding. So if you if you if you kind of explain that in in flanger terms, if you imagine you basically just have this flanger going from like this, mm -hmm. the shorter the delay time, the higher it's gonna go. It's gonna go like all the way up. And if you actually hit the zero point where it goes all the way up and meets the dry signal, it's gonna cancel each other out. Zero point. It, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. if you mix it the right or the wrong way it's going to completely cancel out yep. each other. So it goes higher and higher. So it's a matter of how high you want that kind of chorusy sound or flanger sound to, to be. Okay. Can we hear that? Yeah. cool because I don't think I've ever done a tone print with doing a chorus with a triangle waveform because you always think of it as you want that kind of, of smooth yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not. It's no. Not at all. No. And it's not like it sounds jagged or anything. It just no, gives it this cool character. I, I, um, I'll never forget the first time I heard that, you know, thinking, I thought, I was, is it broken? What's going yeah. on? Mm. But you put it together, it's like, yeah, yeah. it's oh, yeah. great. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, okay. So that's stored now. Yeah. So wicked. Can we just see if we can now add a a preamp to it? Yeah. And see if we can match that little bit of grind yeah. from the from digging in. Yeah. Let's try the mojo mojo. The mojo mojo is just a straight overdrive. Yeah. Excuse my ignorance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Because what, so what we're replicating here is a way that when I dig in, 
the preamp in this just sort of breaks up a bit. Yeah. <laughs> switch to? Uh, it cuts a little bit of the lows. Okay. Pretty subtle. Yeah. Leave it in though. We Leave it in, yeah. yeah. That's it. That's it. So now you get a little bit of that spike because that's an active EQ control, so you can give it more Yeah, and that's that's what he was wanting, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. A bit more exactly. top end. Yeah. Switch her over. Yeah. So there's a bit more That's bottom a... and a bit more top. It's more. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we need more bottom end and more top end. Uh, that might be a struggle. It's not a million miles away, is no, it? No, we just need to build that into this thing. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> What's really interesting is that how essential that bit of overdrive is to yeah. the classic yep. sound. Yep. I mean, and it's still it, a nice chorus sound without it, but it gives yeah. you that extra character. Yeah, well, this is yeah. 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 Here we go. Without it. Yeah. And, and actually, what's nice about that is depending on what overdrive pedal you have and you like, you can just kind of tweak it yeah, to you, your yeah. your preferred yeah. version of that. Because obviously if you've got it all in the one box, you don't have the option. No. The only problem I find with that, that sound is that it only enables me to play add nine chords. <laughs> <laughs> Something happens with yeah, my... Yeah. Um, <laughs> It's technically not an add nine chord. <laughs> yeah, so these we leave cranked. Yep. These are now center position. Right. That's what I'm going to say to okay. not yep. get in trouble. But you guys can still decide the range. Okay. So how, f how far do they go in either way? Okay. So basically you have to set like a minimum position. Okay, well that's easy. And what I've done now is that I set it so that it both controls go as far as they go in either direction. Okay. Okay. And we can always minimize from there. So this is us. What maybe? Yeah, you have to do that. So the speed and depth are both turned down 
here. Oh. And then as I, as I increase it, the depth and the speed together are increased. So if you just really? play that, yeah. So. so do we want to do the same thing? Do we want to map them together? Or do we well, no, we'll just have it, separate? as we turn the speed down together, we get this. This should be, with, okay. with both oh. speed and depth turned oh, okay. down, this should be the minimum. Yeah. Can we hear it on the stereo setting so we can hear the... Uh... Right. So that's pretty much nothing. Almost, um, almost nothing, yeah. and then with all the way up. Love that. Hang on. <laughs> so, it's so good. Okay, so let's let's start with this this the, yeah, the slow start one first. Yeah. Okay. It's a bit faster and it's not um, actually the delay time, I think, is is even longer because longer. there's too much top end. In yeah. That. A little bit deeper. Um, More still? But, or? But yeah. But well, I, I, sorry. I think I think the delay time is fine now, but the modulation depth needs to be a bit a bit deeper. That's that's better. Um, Keep, just keep going. Don't, I think get, if you, don't get him tweaking. So <laughs> if you have if you have the, the the speed's fine, but the minimum depth, if that can just be a bit deeper. Yep. So there's definitely something going on. It's just when it. When so it, when there's it no goes, dry signal yet, it, though, right? There's no, there's no dry signal yet? Yes, there is. Do you want me to oh, kill the dry? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Do you just, want me to kill the dry? Just for one moment, yeah. yeah. Okay, so we don't need it to go that deep. Come in, Mr. Bond. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, if we can make that the maximum speed. Maximum speed. And there it is. Okay, try now. Yeah, all the way. Okay, so we'll leave it like that so we can get his ringtones. So if we put the dry signal back in. Yep. So the C1 is just this. Just changes the speed. Yeah. yeah. Or the very even seems like less depth at that lowest level, but well, just to play devil's avocado. On the lowest setting, lowest setting. It's still quite fast at the last setting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly what's going on. So, if we can increase the minimum speed. Yeah. You just find the spot you like. Okay. I'll do it afterwards when you go. Just there. Yeah. Just there. 
the minimum delay time is still going really close to zero. Can yeah. we can we bring that back a little bit? Sure. Try now. That's great. That's great. Store this. So now all we need to do is the maximum, or we need the maximum speed as well. Yeah, the I think we're pretty well. <laughs> Plus a little bit more. Yeah. Clapton in the mid 70s. That's Lay he, down, Sally. That's it's what right he was there. hearing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he was hearing. <laughs> so don't do drugs, people. That's yeah. basically what it is. <laughs> The longest is... tone print you've ever done? No. Really? No, no. Okay, we're we're going to keep you going guys until are, it is. You guys are... We did one... I think the longest one I've ever done was with Steve Vai. Right. He, he, oh, has, he just, he just doesn't that. stop talking, does he? He just goes on and on. <laughs> he, was, he had a very specific thing he wanted to achieve. No, but I'm pleased about that. Yeah, quite a long time. Definitely. If we but, take longer than Steve Vai, something is wrong in the world. <laughs> <laughs> right? Definitely. Oh, that's a beautiful sound. That's really nice. It's really great. Awesome. So that's fantastic. Last job for today. Okay. Not at least for this tone print. You guys got to come up with a name for it. Ah. ah. Pini Vagini. <laughs> <laughs> it's a song Dan wrote I in like Italy. <laughs> <laughs> Dan's broken ensemble. I like. Dan's broken ensemble. There you go. There you go.